podcast uh, radio anatomy of paranasal sinuses and nasal cavity on non contrast ct pns also a little on the x ray starting with the x ray pns this is water's view and in water's view here we can see above the orbits we have these air filled cavities these are paired frontal sinuses one on each side right and left so these are frontal sinuses below the frontal sinuses above the nasal cavity in between the orbit we have the ethmoid air cells on each side of the maxilla bone we have these air filled cavities those are maxillary sinuses again paired sinuses and here we can see sphenoid sinus in the sphenoid bone so these three are paired sinuses and sphenoid is a unpaired sinus coming to first sinus cavity that is maxillary sinus this is axial ct image showing maxillary sinuses on either side of nasal cavity they are pyramid shaped sinuses within the maxillary bone one on right one on left so they are paired sinuses coming to their anatomy so these are maxillary sinuses they are pyramidal shaped so they have a base and an apex base of the sinuses is formed by the lateral wall of nasal cavity and apex of maxillary sinus is towards lateral aspect that is formed by zygomatic bone so here the floor of maxillary sinus is formed by alveolar processes of maxillary bone and roof of maxillary sinus is formed by the inferior wall of orbit or floor of orbit you can we see the same thing and posteriorly or the posterior lateral wall of maxillary sinus is nothing but the anterior border of terigo palatine fossa let's discuss how the maxillary sinuses drain they drain through these ostia those are called maxillary ostia ostium is uh, singular and ostia is plural and there's something called as osteomyatal complex which we'll discuss now as the name itself suggest it has maxillary ostia and meatosis this process here is the uncinate process if you remember from ent days this is the one which is removed in fest surgeries this area around the uncinate process here or this gap is nothing but the hiatus semilunaris next this drainage pathway is the maxillary ostia or this opening is the maxillary ostia and this region of maxillary sinus adjacent to ostia is the infundibulum of maxillary sinus so opposite we can see how the maxillary sinus is drained and this region below the middle turbinate is the middle meatus that is the osteomyatal comp these are the component of osteomyatal complex next moving on to frontal sinuses they are nothing but the paired sinuses within the frontal bone so most often it has two chambers which is separated by a bony septum as you can see in this figure let's see the anatomy so these are the frontal sinuses on coronal images these are on the axial images we can see the intra sinus bony septum which is dividing it to two chambers and it is related to the anterior cranial fossa of brain and it's also related to orbit coming to the drainage pathways it has a variable anatomy and it's not constant in each patient to be similar so here in green we can see this is the frontal sinus this is the coronal coronal ct section and this pink color line wherever i am drawing is nothing but the drainage pathway of both frontal sinuses drawn so here is the frontal sinus and whatever the pink line i have drawn is the drainage pathway into the 
nasal cavity it is draining into middle meatus as you can see it is below the middle turbinate so this canal is called frontoethmoidal recess the drainage pathway is called frontoethmoidal recess because even the ethmoid sinus is drained through the same recess if in case the frontal sinus is alone draining through this pathway it's called frontal recess and this area of the frontal sinus adjacent to the ostium is the infundibulum of frontal sinus and here you can see the hiatus semilunaris which we discussed previously and the middle meatus this side coming to ethmoid air cells again paired cells on either side left and right these are located in ethmoid bone itself separated by multiple bony lamellae these are again paired sinuses or paired set of air cells there are 3 to 18 in number normally which is separated by bony lamellae or bony septae which we can see here these are the septations which divide into multiple air cells and these are called ethmoidal lamellae again ethmoid air cells are divided into two groups that is anterior ethmoid air cell group and the posterior ethmoid air cell group there was a middle ethmoid air cell group which is obsolete now it's not uh, usually used the term so now it's just divided into anterior ethmoidal air cells and posterior ethmoidal air cells we'll see how it is divided it's divided again the dividing factor will be the basal lamella of the middle turbinate which we'll see now in ct how it looks and how the cells are divided so wherever the middle turbinate attaches to lamina papyracea is the basal lamella now i'm showing in coronal ct section how middle turbinate is attaching itself to lamina papyracea this is the basal lamella of middle turbinate i show the same on axial here you can see in blue i'm drawing and on sagittal this is the one where it is attaching itself to the lamina papyracea this is dividing it into anterior cells and posterior cells so the one in pink are the anterior ethmoidal air cells one in green are the posterior ethmoidal air cell group coming to anatomy of ethmoidal air cells so this bone is the lamina papyracea posteriorly there is anterior wall of sphenoid sinus in coronal section we can see roof is made of anterior cranial fossa or anterior skull base which we'll discuss in detail coming to anterior skull base or roof of ethmoid it's made up of multiple structures we'll see them one by one so this fossa here which is the olfactory fossa the bony margin is horizontal lamellae of cribriform plate yes and this vertical bone here is nothing but the vertical lamellae of cribriform plate next lateral to it we have again this one in yellow this is nothing but fovea ethmoidalis and this bony projection here is the crista galli of cribriform plate so these are the parts of cribriform plate or anterior skull base which forms the roof of ethmoidal air cells now these cavities here what we can see below the olfactory fossa are nothing but the olfactory clefts or olfactory recesses and this in green here are the olfactory fossa one on right one on left coming to drainage pathway of ethmoidal air cells again it is variable but we'll discuss what is the most commonly seen anatomy here along with frontal sinus it can drain through frontoethmoidal recesses into superior recess and middle meatus so they combine with frontal sinuses and drain through frontoethmoidal recess 
either into superior recess or into the middle meatus. Next, coming to our last sinus, that is the sphenoid sinus, the posterior most sinus located in the body of sphenoid bone. We'll see its anatomy now. It has two to three spaces separated by intrasinus septum, but still it is considered as one sphenoid sinus or one uh, entity. And this is a coronal section and sagittal section here in blue color I am showing this bone as a superior margin is called planum sphenoidale and here we'll have the pituitary gland so that is the pituitary fossa posterior to it and this foramen here anterior to sphenoid sinus is the one where optic nerve passes through that's the optic canal and here we have internal carotid artery these are the major relationships of sphenoid sinus then we have the drainage pathways drainage of sphenoid sinus again is to the nasal cavity through the canal called spheno-ethmoidal recess again sphenoid cavity and ethmoidal air cells will drain together and this is the ostia the sphenoid ostia we are not discussing variant anatomy in this video but we will discuss the types of sphenoid sinuses with, due to pneumatization so there is conchal type then there is the one which is just anterior to the pituitary fossa that is the pre-cellar type anterior to cellar now the one which involves the cellar part of the bone will be the cellar type of a sphenoid pneumatization next the last one will be extending up to the dorsum cellae that is the post cellar type of pneumatization we are done with paranasal sinuses anatomy now coming to nasal cavity so here we have the nasal cavity which is nothing but part of upper respiratory tract all of you know so discussing ct anatomy of it it contains nasal septum with right and left nasal cavities divided by the septum coming to axial ct sections of nasal cavity anatomy here we can see nasal ala on both sides anterior part of the septum where the bone is not present is columella and here we can see both nostrils right and left then we have the openings here they are called pyriform apertures nothing but anterior coanae here we have the nasal septum proper which has bony part of the nasal septum and the mucosa which is dividing nasal cavity into right and left here what we can see here uh, in this section is the inferior turbinate coming to the coronal sections of nccd pns this we will explain turbinates and meatuses which are very well seen on coronal sections so the largest and the inferior most turbinate with the bony part is called the inferior turbinate and the next above which we have the middle turbinate here in green and the last and the smallest turbinate is the superior turbinate they are associated with their respective spaces below the turbinate they are called the meatuses this is the superior meatus this is the middle meatus and here we have the inferior meatus done with the nasal cavities we'll see anatomy of the nasal septum as a whole so this bony projection is the crista galli next we have this flat bony projection which is dropped down from the ethmoid bone this is the perpendicular plate of ethmoid and from below we have the vomer bone arising from the hard palate both of them belong to the maxilla bone on sagittal section we can see the paired nasal bones on either side thank you for watching like share and subscribe our channel on youtube and instagram at radiology doodles please comment below if you want more videos